I'm joined now by Mickey Harrison, Carnival Corporation PLC, who's just been on stage being questioned by Jeremy Vine. Mickey, you talked um, about how Queen Mary II will be your largest ship you'll, you'll build, mm -hmm. even though a lot of your rivals are building bigger and bigger ships. Why, why are you sticking at, at, at that size? Well, all, all our, our shipbuilding decisions are brand decisions, and Carnival Cruise Lines, for example, uh, just took delivery of 130,000 ton Carnival Dream. They're very happy with that size. They don't see any need to build larger. Um, P&O just uh, took delivery of Ventura and, uh, and Azura soon at 116,000 tons. They're very happy with that size. So we're trying to build uh, a, a product uh, based on, on the kinds of service and value that, that those brands can deliver. And we're comfortable with the size. Uh, as I said on stage, uh, you know, some people want Mall of the Americas, these monster uh, locations. Uh, we're trying to build a cruise experience that uh, that suits our brands and, and the size of the ships are, are fine. And, and you said also it gives you more flexibility. Can you explain that? Well we try we try to design the ships so that they can uh, go to virtually all the ports of call we go to. Uh, ports, ports of call like Venice have size restrictions. There are other ports that have height restrictions for bridges and so on. Um, if you look at our fleet, virtually all our ships can go to virtually all our ports and we try to keep um, the ship size in such a way that we have maximum flexibility of itineraries. So that's quite a focus on the destination, whereas perhaps the, some of the other lines are focusing on putting on these you know, rock climbing walls or ice rinks or surfing parks, etc. So is that, is that uh, too gimmicky for you? Well, it's actually only one line that's, that's, that's building uh, ships, uh, really, that, that, that are putting huge strain on infrastructure, huge investment on ports to, uh, to deal with, uh, with those ships, uh, something that we, we really don't think we should be getting into. But uh, I'm sure they'll do fine. I'm sure their uh, ship will be very successful, but it's just not our cup of tea. Okay, thank you. Let's, um, let's just move on to talk about something else you mentioned on stage about uh, the difficult times we've had over the last year and how you've managed to get uh, more people on board by reducing your prices to make your cruises, as you said in your words, irresistible. Um, t tell us how that's worked for you and also can you just comment on how you envisage getting those prices back up again when people are now going to be used to getting such a good deal? Well, what I said was that, that heavy discounting has a lot of negatives to it. Obviously, it, it means lower commission for travel agents. It means lower returns for us. But the positive is it makes cruising affordable to, for more people. Um, and over the long run, that's a very positive thing, that more people will experience um, a cruise. Once they experience a cruise, they come back again. We'll carry over 8 million guests this year. More than 3 million of those will be new to cruise, will be their first time. Um, and that's kind of an annuity that we're, we're building over time. Okay, and just picking up on that point about agents then earning less commission, I guess a question for people watching this interview who are you know, trying to sell crews and trying to make some money out of it, there's a, there's a double whammy because the, the discounting situation in the UK market at the moment means that often agents are giving away whatever commission they are earning, which you've just said is, is perhaps going to be reduced, they're giving right. away some of that. Right. So that causes quite a problem for them to continue you know, being, being profitable and, uh, and doing well. What do you think you know, they can, what's the answer to that? What, you know, what, what should they be doing? Well, I, you know, I really don't want to tell them how to run their business, but uh, they really should value the service they're giving their customer. And if they're rebating uh, a significant piece of their commission, they're not valuing the service that they're giving to the customer enough. Uh, and they should seriously consider it rebating less. Absolutely, because you said you're still making profits, even though times are tough, you're still making profits. And we, we've got a number of agents that have been, you know, struggling and some even gone out of business. So, so you think they should do more about service rather than focusing on price? Yeah, I think, I think there's a lot they, sh they can do. And again, I'm not a business consultant, but uh, they really need to focus on, on the web and, and, uh, and more efficient ways of, of marketing the product, more efficient ways of running their business. But at the same time, there's no point in getting more efficient just to turn around and give the money back. So uh, keeping more of their commission would be a, a positive thing. Uh, you also talked um, about how in the last few months things have improved in terms of the liquidity situation, finding it much easier now to raise cash. So what does uh, that, that mean for the cruising sector as a whole and perhaps for, for Carnival Corp as well? Well, for us, it, it makes it possible for us to continue uh, our new building programs. Uh, we, we still have a number of ships under construction. We have six being delivered next year alone. Uh, but uh, with, uh, with liquidity situation easing up, we can now consider... Uh, building now for 13 and 14. We have ships uh, uh, under contract through 2012. 
Um, it also means that the general mood of the public has, has, has changed, uh, and we're seeing much higher volumes of bookings, uh, particularly since March, uh, right through this summer, volumes have been very high. And as long as volumes uh, are higher than our capacity increases for a sustained period of time, we'll be able to start raising prices. And I think that's starting to happen already. Prices are getting tweaked up, and, and really consumers that are looking for the best bargains should be looking for them right now. They shouldn't wait because prices are going to go higher. Okay, and just interesting on that shipbuilding point because I think you know some people did put a hold on some of their their orders and things. So, uh, and you've already got ninety three ships you said on stage. So, where yeah. do you see that going to? Like six more next year, but how far can it go? How many can Carnival own? Well, historically, since since our merger with P and O Princess, we were building four to six ships a year. Um, I, I think that 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 building. Um, boom is going to subside and we're going to be looking at two to three ships a year. Uh, but we're going to c continue to build. We, we have great brands, whether it's P&O and Cunard in the UK, Aida in Germany, Costa in Italy, Holland America, Princess and Carnival in the US. I mean, we have great, great brands and we're going to want to continue to build them. And we've had times before when people have been saying it's the market saturated, there's far too many coming, there's just too, too much, but you don't believe in that? No, we're still, we're still just scratching the surface. We're still a very small piece of the vacation pie. We offer the best value in vacations, the best value in holidays, and there's no reason why our piece of the vacation buy can't be a lot bigger than it is today. So your vision for, let's say, the next five years? Bigger and better. And can you just come in particularly on the UK market for us, because obviously that's who's watching this. Well, clearly we com we're committed to the UK market. We have two new ships for the UK coming next year with, with Azura and uh, Queen Elizabeth. Um, so uh, since, since the merger with P&L Princess, we've committed a lot of capital to the UK market, and we, we, we will continue to do that. Uh, it's a great market for us and, uh, and still has a lot of growth potential. Uh, I think um, David told me recently that 80% uh, of the population is a two-hour drive from a port. Uh, that really is very, very convenient that they don't have to go to the airport uh, every time they want to take a cruise, uh, which uh, I think even makes uh, the growth potential greater. Absolutely, but competition is hotting up in Southampton, so how are you going to deal with that? We love competition. The more, the merrier. Well, fantastic. You heard it here. Thank you very much to Mickey Harrison. Thank you for coming to the convention.